The scripture reading this morning is from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 34, verses 1 through 6. Then Moses went up to Mount Nebo from the plains of Moab and climbed Pisgah Peak, which is across from Jericho. And the Lord showed him in the whole land, from Gilead as far as Dan, all the land of Naphtali, the land of Ephraim and Manasseh, all the land of Judah extending to the Mediterranean Sea, the Negev, the Jordan Valley with Jericho, the city of Palms, as far as Zor. Then the Lord said to Moses, This is the land I promised on oath to Abraham, to Isaac and Jacob, when I said, I will give it to your descendants. I have now allowed you to see it with your own eyes, but you will not enter the land. So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab, just as the Lord had said. The Lord buried him in a valley near Beth Peor in Moab, but to this day, no one knows the exact place. Strange passage to choose for such an occasion. The story of the Exodus, the story that uh, goes on for many, many passages and chapters in the Bible. I just wanted to present this as an introduction. Uh, I tried uh, doing a, a whole precy of the Exodus in another service and it didn't quite work out because it sort of went on and on. But this gives you the story uh, right near the end of the experience of the Exodus where Moses has led his people in that experience for 40 years. An experience of journeying, of searching, of saying yes and no, of saying, some people saying, I want to go back to where we were before. Some people saying, let's keep going. Some people saying, where are you taking us? And some people saying, we need to follow our leader. Moses gets to the edge. He gets to the edge of the promised land. He can see it. And that's as close as he gets. In my five or six or seven years of interim ministry after I left you here, this was an important story for the people that I ministered with and to because they were all in times of transition, as you are right now. Times of transition are basically defined as times of change, times when either your minister is no longer with you or else there is a, a need in your community of faith to do something in a different way. An excellent example for all of us to look at and to follow is the Exodus experience. Because all of the emotions, all of the experiences that we go through in times of tra change and transition are there presented. The questioning, the wondering, why don't we, why don't we go back to the way things were comfortable when, when we were back 10 years ago, whatever. Who are we going to look for as our leader? What would we want that leader to do? How would we want that leader to lead us? All of those questions are pertinent in the experience that you are going about now. You've done some of that in your questioning and your searching, and now I assume there are people amongst you that are going to find uh, those, the leader that you've sort of expressed your wishes to find. We are on that cusp, we all are on that cusp of not quite getting there yet. We're looking, like Moses. We're looking at where we're going to be. And what an excellent time to recognize that fact as we look at uh, the celebrations that we do today. Baptism. Baptism, when we reflect upon what our faith is, when we look at uh, accepting a new child, someone new into our community of faith, what is ahead? What is in store for that youngster in the future down the road? What does this community of faith mean to that family, to all of us today? 
Those are some of the questions that I hope we are asking ourselves, as well as reflecting, if we ever do, on our own baptism. What did it mean? What does it mean today? And then we look at communion and ref reflect on, on the symbols, the symbolism of what we share today. The bread, the juice, the symbols of, of, of body and blood, of, of new life, of what it means to, str to struggle for the sense of what is right. So all of this is a part of what hopefully you are experiencing, but also a sense of, of looking at the future and what we need to look at as we leap out into what is to come. All of the many communities of faith that I was ministering with and to at the time were struggling with the sense of who were we, who are we, and the sense of where are we going to go? Where are we headed? And I sense that's all a part of what you are here about in the days and weeks and, and months in the past, but also into the future. And I think all of us gather together in celebration of the fact that we have community and that we are community. And what best to celebrate those experiences than through baptism, which brings us together to celebrate the sense of new life and the sense of communion, which offers us a sense of new hope, a sense of reflection on who are we as God's people. Where is God calling us? What are we about in the family of faith? So as we come and share together in the meal, it basically was a meal originally. All of the disciples gathered around the table. They didn't quite understand what this was all about. But Jesus offered them an example to follow throughout the rest of their lives, and we're still in many ways doing it today. We gather to give thanks, to share, to share in a, a meal of celebration and thanksgiving, and then to be sent out into the world to be the people God means us to be. May God continue to guide, nurture, and direct us in the future. Amen.